This is a Digital Music Trends coverage of Medium 2014, an interview with Norman Abdul Halim, Chairman of the Recording Industry Association of Malaysia. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the delivery platform used by leading independent labels, distributors and aggregators around the world on ci-info.com. Hi Norma, it's uh, great to be here with you at Medium 2014. So uh, first of all, you know, uh, a really great booth here uh, for, for the Malaysian uh, presence uh, at uh, Medium. So how did you end up getting involved with Medium in the first place? Well, first of all, uh, I attended the market uh, sometime towards uh, uh, mid around 2005, 2006 on my own personal yeah. capacity so uh, you know I'm, I'm I've been I was appointed as the chairman of uh, the music committee uh, national development committee uh, in about two years ago about a couple of years back and uh, that was when actually I mooted the idea of actually having uh, our presence here yeah. to the Malaysian government uh, and on behalf of recording industry in Malaysia we represent uh, about 300 record companies um, and we, we would like to see more activities to happen outside of Malaysia sure. especially promoting our music to uh, you know across uh, the globe and um, We've seen some uh, early day success of our artists making their own efforts in Taiwan, China, uh, in India, uh, UK, even the US. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think our presence here in Medem is actually very important, especially to actually um, continuously uh, build our presence in the global market space. Sure. Let's talk about uh, the uh, development of uh, digital music in Malaysia as well. So, uh, what kind of digital services do you have at the moment and what kind of opportunities do you see for growth there? Well, the big ones are uh, still very much dependent on uh, services provided by the tele telecommunications companies right. for the ring back tone business model. Uh, that contributes uh, roughly about uh, two-thirds of our income right now compared to physical sales. Um, and I would say that the, um, uh, the normal, all the other usual suspects like iTunes, Spotify, Deezer, they're all in Malaysia already. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of record companies are seeing revenue from YouTube even. Yeah. So uh, I think that, that uh, generally what you see elsewhere, I mean, we have it in Malaysia. Uh, it's just that, that I think the Malaysian record companies, especially the artists, need to look into content that can travel. Right. So especially language is always an issue. Uh, and I think that uh, we encourage that we encourage to do more collaborations and partnerships. Absolutely. And yeah, I was reading a piece actually from a couple of years ago uh, about the Malaysian music industry talking about how there was still quite a bit of fragmentation when it comes to languages, uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, going from uh, Tamil, Malay, Chinese and English. So yes. how, how do you deal with that fragmentation? And, you know, of course, it's, it's an asset, but it's yeah. also a problem in terms of unifying the, the music industry as a whole, right? Yeah, so the thing is that that's why, you know, under the, uh, the Creative Industry National Development, uh, uh, National D uh, Creative Industry Development Policy for the Music Committee, we have actually uh, created, uh, or actually we didn't create, basically we used to have Chinese uh, equivalent of the Grammys right. in Malaysia. It was, it was done about 12 years ago. So uh, with the help from the government, we managed to organize it again. So right. after 12 years. And we also organized the uh, Indian, uh, our own version of Grammys as well. It's called AIM, Anugrah Industry Music, yeah. or, the, or Music Industry Award Show. So uh, we, we had, for the first time ever, we had uh, for the Indian community, oh, uh, community. Uh, yeah. we also have the Malay, which is the main language in Malaysia. Uh, and we've been organizing it for the past 20 years already. So that one has been, go is, that is a proven success. Really, I mean, uh, normally when we actually organize that event, uh, we have a reach of about four to five million viewers uh, every time we organize that, that, that award show. So again, we realize the, uh, the strengths and also the, 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 uh, also the, the problems that comes with it. Uh, the good thing about, about uh, having such diverse uh, multilingual society is that one, we can actually and segmentize the market and target based on the demographics. So let's say, for example, we have uh, some success story in Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, our artists, you know, they speak uh, a different kind of Malay, but uh, they, they still, they call it Bahasa Indonesia, but it's still Bahasa. We, we speak Bahasa Malaysia. So it's similar, but it's not the same. Uh, but we have got some success of our artists in Indonesia, in Singapore, and also in Brunei. We talk about Mandarin. Uh, our artists have actually exported their music in Taiwan and also in China, yeah. uh, which is actually also a big achievement. And those who speak uh, Tamil, uh, Indian, one of the, uh, the, the, the dialects there. So um, the, uh, it's pretty big in south, the southern part of India. So they're doing okay. So again, English, that's, that's the main one. And I feel that you know, to actually break into uh, all, other, uh, all other countries around the world, I think it's very important for us to actually do more music in English. And we have quite a small community of uh, artists doing um, urban or English language music. 
Uh, it's still pretty much small, but I, I think that, you know, given the encouragement that's given by the government, uh, we will actually see more Malaysian talents to travel. I, I Yuna is actually one of our success stories. Yeah. Uh, she She's already signed to Verve, uh, which is actually a subsidiary of uh, Universal. And uh, she's touring right now with in, in the US, and I think that that's that's quite an inspiration for the rest of the artists in Malaysia. Absolutely. Uh, looking at the, the the way that the industry is structured as well, do you have a big major label presence? Is it mostly independent labels that are local to to, to Malaysia? How, how does it work? We have Universal, Warner, and and Sony in in, in Malaysia. They are part of the Rame as well. They are yeah. also they sit in a council. Uh, but I must say that that. Uh, the 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 the, the um, contribution from the independent labels are getting more and more significant, um, especially in terms of exporting music. Right, for example, you know all these artists that I mentioned that actually have yeah. done some level of success uh, are actually signed to independent labels. So uh, of course, you know, Yuna eventually signed to a subsidiary of of Universal, but you know she started off as her own independent label as well. So I think it's the effort made by these Malaysian artists and Malaysian labels and managers actually uh, try to open new uh, territories and new opportunities. Uh, whereas if you were signed to a major label, sometimes you get drowned in the priority list. You know, I mean the thing is the uh, it's, that's a reality. So uh, I think that that in order to see more Malaysian artists to travel or even composers or 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 or, or, or performers, I would say that you know it's it's, it's actually very vit it's vital to see. Uh, a lot more effort made by the indies. Yeah. Sure. And looking at, we're talking about uh, digital services, and uh, one of the key things that I, I've seen when I talk to people about uh, Asia and uh, the distribution models uh, over there is that uh, companies really have to adapt to. to uh, different pricings uh, for different territories because every territory has got a very different economic outlook yes. and the population has got a different average income and so do you see like services that come from outside like these are for example yeah. adapt to that and offer plans that are actually affordable for the general population or is it still a problem on the front well uh -huh. iTunes we still actually price it at 99 cents right. so I think uh, that is actually still a, pretty much a standard price an accepted price yeah. uh, even for the ring back tone model you know we see that it's actually the first um, uh, it's a sub subscription model, and you actually pay for on monthly basis. So it ranges from uh, from I think if as, uh, as low as fifty cents per week uh, to uh, three ringgit, you know, which is actually roughly is about a dollar US. Right. So uh, three ringgit per month. So the thing is that that goes to show that it's, it's really an accepted price. Yeah. That if you look at uh, for to have access to music, uh, it's not really to acquire right now. I mean, it is a lot of it is subscription model. They don't really own the music, uh, but they, they they have access to it and. And the price level that we're looking at is around the same around the world, you know. I mean, it's still pretty much the same. Yeah. So what is actually uh, accepted in the US is actually accepted in Malaysia. Yeah. Looking at uh, the uh, problem of, of course, uh, copyright infringement, which is something that uh, is still uh, pretty much a problem for the, for the recording music industry, uh, although streaming services are, are helping out on that front. You know, uh, in 2011, I think, in Malaysia, there was a, a, you know, some sort of uh, move to uh, restrict access uh, to certain websites uh, from ISPs that was government mandated. So from 2011 to today, how has that situation evolved? And is there anything new that ha uh, happened in between? Well, first of all, I'm also I was appointed by the Ministry of uh, Domestic Trade, uh, Consumerism, and Cooperatives that governs the the Act as the, of the um, the Copyright uh, Amendment Act that was actually amended in 2011 was actually uh, initiated by that ministry. Right. So I'm appointed as the Chairman of Awareness and Publicity for that uh, for that uh, anti anti piracy task force. Very much, I was very I personally was very much involved together with RIM uh, to actually help the government to to look at uh, models around the world. Uh, which is effective uh, to actually help us to grow the, uh, the music industry in Malaysia. So uh, since 2011, uh, there were a number of uh, torrent sites that were shut down. I think the biggest one in Malaysia that was actually uh, a, has been a, a problematic to us was actually this this, this site called Jiwang, J, J I W A N G, and that's a local torrent site. And uh, we managed to actually uh, uh, take that site down. Uh, right now, it's in the actually process of litigation. Uh, in fact, RIM is also taking action against them on a civil uh, a civil action against them. So uh, I feel that 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 it is still early days, uh, and I think that that when the government actually made the amendment of the Copyright Act, I think it is it was very forward uh, thinking and especially uh, to address issues such as uh, online piracy. Yeah. And it's not just on music; it's to talk about piracy as a whole, including films and and all the other you know uh, entertainment content or even. Even even software, for that matter. So I guess 
you know, Malaysian, uh, Malaysian government, even the Malaysians uh, per se, overall, I would say that it's still very much, uh, um, we, we know about the issues, the issues related to piracy. We know that, they are, that, 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 that we need to overcome this particular issue, but I think we are one of the more advanced nations in Southeast Asia at least to address such problems. Sure. And looking at uh, uh, you know the uh, medium presence of Malaysia, uh, do you have uh, any particular artists that uh, uh, you'd like to suggest to people to go and check out uh, uh, back at home? Yeah, I mean it depends on what kind of music that you like. Uh, you know, like um, you talk about Sheila Hamza. I mean, she's uh, very much uh, uh, one of the top uh, female artists in Malaysia. Uh, she performs uh, uh, pop music, uh, and uh, and we have uh, Azan Natat writer. I mean, uh, he's very much uh, you know very very talented guy. He's the lead singer. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's got a very dynamic vocal range. Uh, and if you like you know, other forms of languages, you know, especially for the Chinese market. We have Thomas Jack, and uh, we talk about the uh, English, uh, sorry, the the, the Indian uh, Punjabi kind of music. As, uh, we have uh, gold cards. So we have, we brought four artists with us uh, for this uh, mission, uh, and perform in this particular program called Malaysian Supernova Concert. So we did it last year. We brought eight artists, but this time round we, we thought that it's better for us to narrow it down to selected few. Yeah. Um, I think it's. Uh, it's the way to go. And I think that, that there's a lot more that Malaysians can offer. I think that uh, just come and check out our booth. <laughs> uh, and if even if you missed, uh, you know, at, uh, visiting us at our booth in Khan, uh, in Midam, uh, you know, you can always reach out to RIM, RIM, Recording Industry Malaysia, and, and to build more partnerships with Malaysian record companies. Sure. And finally, let's talk about, uh, I want to finish by talking about YouTube. YouTube, uh, sometimes I feel like it's a great unifier when it comes to the, the worldwide music industry because it's accessible almost everywhere. Yeah. And it's one of the means by which some of the international artists can break through. You know, yeah. we've seen, of course, from Korea, yeah. quite a few, uh, bands coming yeah. through and uh, Sai especially but uh, mm. quite a few other bands as well yeah. so uh, how is, is your relationship with YouTube and how is the Malaysian recording industry's uh, relationship with that with that mean of distribution well Google YouTube is a great partner I mean uh, we have a relationship with them directly I mean as far as our um, I'm KRU, I mean I'm, I'm also running carry music so um, you know we have direct access to Google and and with as a one one of YouTube's uh, official channels uh, but a lot of the other record companies actually have those access as well. Yeah. Um, and I think that it's a, it's a great platform. It's the number one TV network right now. And it's, the best thing is actually just how you build your presence on a social media platform yeah. to get your presence felt. And I think that one thing that is actually important that we realize in Malaysia is that uh, we need to upgrade the standard quality of our music videos because now it's all visual as well. It's not just the audio. So the visual presentation is important and this is why under the... Uh, the National uh, Creative Industry Development uh, Initiative for the music industry, the, uh, there was uh, about a million dollars US who was allocated in terms of uh, as, a sub, as a matching grant to support uh, artists to produce music, better quality music videos. So I think that, that, I mean, I think in Malaysia, we have very low cost of living compared to the Western markets. So uh, even uh, with a $10,000 US, budget you know you can get really really high quality music video so um, you know I can I can, t I can tell you that the government is actually listening to you know the you know what the industry is trying to, to achieve uh, we're getting great support from the government even this time round also I mean it's actually the, the booth is sponsored by the government of Malaysia uh, and even a concert a supernova concert so I think that that uh, that you know we, we feel very comfortable that 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 that, that, that you know the 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 struggles that we have been facing all this while, including piracy issues, are all being addressed. So it's 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 work in progress. It's, it's not a positive it's, it's a, pos a positive uh, outcome so far, uh, but it's still work in progress. It's not like you know, this is actually not our final destination. It's still we're still on, on this in, on this journey on on building the Malaysian music industry, uh, uh, and hopefully that we'll be able to achieve similar kind of success story as our Korean counterparts. Great. Well, Norman, thank you so much for your time, and this has been the Digital Music Trends uh, coverage of Medium 2014. Thanks. Thank you very much.